Breaking the Orphan Spirit is the title of this show. And how do you break an orphan spirit? What is an orphan spirit? They can't receive love. They're not able to really give love. And those people that are stuck with the spirit have, been gone, have gotten through so much trauma and dealt with so many things. How can they step out of it? With me today is an incredible woman of God, Okia Kim, who was put on the steps to die basically, or to be found by somebody. And when somebody found her right after birth, rats were eating on her body. Wow, how do you overcome something so traumatic? And yet when God gets involved, everything changes. I am so excited because, okay, I believe you are the answer to a lot of people that don't know how to break free from these issues that they're dealing in their life and they don't even understand why. So what happened to you and why did people give you up? Well, at that time, right after the Korean War, it was a, a civil war and uh, it was, um, it was their protocol, their law for the babies that were um, half-blooded to either be put to death or left to die. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I can't even comprehend that. So at one point, um, I was um, left, and, and they, they have these dumping grounds for babies that are happening. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. They just put babies there to die? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so the, the woman that actually found me... Um, what a gift right there. Yes, she took me um, because, like you said, the rats had started to chew on me. And she, it must have been immediately because she's, you know, I still have scars. Wow. And Because uh, you were a newborn at I that point. I was newborn. And so she, she did the best she could, uh, took me to the orphanage, and that's where my life began as a orphan as and how old were you? were you literally a day old or how old were you at I don't know it doesn't really say um, in the paperwork that came with me um, yeah so so you're in an orphanage I assume there's lots of children there yes. and were they able to give you love that that attention that every baby needs you know no no, um, we were never touched. Uh, wow. We barely got food. But as an infant, uh, you're put in um, a crib and your diapers aren't changed. Not changed? No. The diaper. rash that comes with that. It, you got to understand it was war. It was war and it was devastating. Um, and so they did the best they could for the orphans that were being brought in. And there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, so that, how long were you in this orphanage? Four years. Four years, yes. no love. You didn't know any better. Didn't know any better. Didn't we know. We just assumed that that was... But it leaves something with you. Now, something happened for you... Because you're sitting here in this studio right now. Mm -hmm. So something happened. You're four years there. What happened? I was adopted into an American family. Um, let me go back. Um, because they, they didn't have enough people to hold any of the babies. It was... We didn't cry. Because nobody was going to come. And comfort you. Oh, wow. Um, you learned not to cry. I just didn't cry. Wow. But there was an underlining, um, what, what do I say, um, mourning, grief. Yeah, I can see. I, I'm imagining that look of people in their eyes in war. Yes. That, that there is, it has that look. Yes. So, and you had that look. And all of you did. If you don't cry anymore, that then you beca start becoming numb. You hold back. So, but, so you got adopted yes. into America. Yes. Was that normal at no. that time? Well, 
sort of, okay? I, the, there was 100 children. I was one of the first 100 children to be uh, adopted out of Korea, and they had to literally um, sneak us out. Oh, wow. Because the, the border was um, opened and closed, and so we were the first 100 that came to America. Uh, now, getting to know my um, new family, that was scary because I didn't know the language. Um, I, they wanted to hug me, hold me, touch me, love me. It was, oh, oh, oh. I, it literally hurt my skin. It would literally just hurt. Um, and my, my poor American family, their intention was to, um, you know, bring me into their home and, and to, you know, they wanted to love me. Oh, they well, were giving it their all. Yeah. And they were going to give you everything you had missed in yes. life. And, and you were I not rejected. able. I rejected. I, I kicked them. I scratched them. I, I just didn't want them to hold me. So wow. it, it really hurt their feelings. So they, they put me down. And they did what I called a tolerant love. Um, tolerant love? Tolerant love. Were Loving from a distance on your conditions? On their conditions, my conditions. It was just their dreams kind of shattered mm. because I didn't accept them. I, I didn't... Um, you came yes. with baggage. And they were going to fix it their way, right? which would have been my way, you know, <laughs> so it would have been my way. Well, are you hearing this? So, uh, so often, instead of co-parenting with God, even if you have the best intentions and you want to help, which turned out great later, you try to fix things. And sometimes we have to take a step back, whatever issue you're dealing with, and say, how do I deal with this? God, show me. And guess what? That moment came for Okia, and when that happened, it changed everything. Stay tuned. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be. Empower a champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. With me is Okia Kim. And wow, you know, today she actually will hold a heart while there's surgery being done in the middle of, of, of a whole surg surgical procedure. And yet, if you see where she came from and what she had to overcome, it's amazing how God turns things around and he wants to do that for you now here you are you're not accepting love at all nothing so you had the orphan spirit yes which was not of god nothing like that what are the side effects of an orphan spirit um you you reject yourself hmm okay um which means also, you reject others before they reject you. Huh, okay. And um, you put yourself in situations where um, you know they're going to reject you. And you kind of... You create them? Oh, yeah. You make this, this scenario happen. So, you, you know, you can say, yep, I see. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not worthy. And then you take the pity party afterwards for the way they treat you? Um, pretty, well, I don't know if it's a pity party other than, you know, blaming them. Wow. Yeah. So you had this Christian family take you in. Mm -hmm. You were kept trying to hurt yourself, basically, and hurt yes. them and did not know how to receive. What is it? that you started to be able, because how do you break that off, you know? How do you stop that? Because you're in a vicious cycle, basically. 
As a child, yeah, you, you don't, you can't reason. So one of the first things that um, I did was I saw all my little cousins, my brand new little cousins, and they, we were climbing a fence and they had gotten a sliver um, in their hand and they ran to their mommies and their mommies picked it out. Well, I, was, I went and I got a sliver. <laughs> And I've never heard of anybody getting a sliver intentionally before. So I ran <laughs> because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. So I, I, um, I held my hand out and the first time to let my mom touch me. Wow. How long okay. had she been there? I'd been there, let's see, uh, maybe a year. You know? Wow. And so uh, she took and she took my, my hand, my little hand. And she gently got the splinter out, and then she kissed it. That was oh the wow! First time I felt, wow. I felt that love, a, a, a touch. But you felt. created it. I think so. You created. You chose. She could love you yeah. because you saw it somewhere else. Yeah. So that was the beginning of a start. That was the beginning, yeah. So how did you go from there? What happens after that, you know? Because how, how did, did it get better and better and better? Were they allowed to hug you now? Or like, whoa, no. wait a minute. Okay, so back then, of course, this is in the 50s, okay? the uh, My new uh, daddy, uh, his, his mother, German woman, hated the fact that they adopted a brown person. A black, oh a no, person not, again. Mm -hmm. not again! Not so again! You had that before. She she would kick me and she would push me away. But you would like that. I, I was because used that to was it. your life. I was used to it. So, but I kept standing in front of her and just looking at her because she was fluffy. She was, <laughs> you know? Fluffy. She was. She was. Five feet tall, five feet wide, she just looked fluffy. That's a new term I had never put like that before. <laughs> All right, so what happened with that? Well, one day, for some reason, she she decided, I don't know, she decided to pick me up, put me on her lap. What? And I just, oh. And I was a little bit scared because I wasn't quite sure her intentions, but I was going to enjoy this moment of touch and feeling love. Wow. I didn't know what the word was yet. Right. But you had to allow God yourself. God was, yeah, teaching me that this is, a, this is good. This is good. So, yes. Wow. Now, what was it actually that broke that orphan spirit off of you completely? What, what, what was the process? What did it take? It took Jesus. It took Lord Jesus. Um, he's always used the 23rd Psalm. Um, in 1982, I'd had it with life. And How old were you at that time? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I decided I was going to take my life because hmm. I, I, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to love or be loved and I, I was so tired, just so tired because um, I couldn't get it right. And I took my, my father's uh, truck and my daughter, my, my little daughter, um, because I wasn't going to leave her behind. Mm. And I had it so the exhaust would go into the back of the pickup and we were just going to fall asleep. Something happened and I, I got out of the truck and I, I said, if you're mm. real, if you're real, please show me. And I want to take that right there. If you're real, just show me. If you're real, just show me. She's committing suicide with her daughter that moment. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Bart 
TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life and He wants you to have all the benefits. So here you are, you're in the car, you're trying to commit suicide with your daughter. What happened? I, I, I had this feeling like I, I had, this was my last chance to know if God was real. I, I heard about him. Um, and I, I, so I got out of the truck and, and I, I did. I said, if you're real, please, Tell me, because that's it. And at that point, he gave me a, a, a vision. Hmm. And I had so many burdens that I've carried of rejection, abandonment. Burdens were just sucking me down into the deepest, darkest pit. Doesn't Satan say steal, kill, and then destroy? Mm -hmm. That's where you were in. Yes, and and I was giving up. I was thinking, yeah, until I saw a, a light in the distance, and and this light kept getting brighter, and I. And so, of course, I, I wanted to see what this light was, and I'm trying to stay above what was dragging me down. And then I realized it was a cross. And I realized it was Jesus. Whoa. And, I'm, and I realized he's running. He's not walking. He's not fl He's running. To me. Whoa. And at one point I'm thinking, no, I'm supposed to come to you because I think I'm supposed to lay all my burdens at your cross. I think I, I, I can't get there. But he ran and wow. he picked me up and I became this child, this little tiny child. And he held me and my tears and, and I was surrendering, but my tears were rolling over his shoulder mm -hmm. into his hood. And it was a lake of tears that he had saved. All my tears, all my tears. Wow. And I knew that there was something written in the bottom of his hood, this beautiful lake in his hood. I stopped to, to look. And I said, for these tears, I died. Wow. I died. I, wow. These are your tears. That's why I died for you. And, um, yeah. And so then it was like, I want to know. I, I want to know everything about you. Oh, Tell boy. Tell me everything. Tell me you, everything. You, you would probably run, search, not stop at that point. The hunger would be so real. Because your eyes were opened. Yes, he just, he showed me for the first time when he held me, that was the first time I felt loved and accepted. Wow. Ever. That broke the orphan spirit. It broke the orphan spirit. Was there a moment before that that you gave permission to the Lord? I surrender. I need help. I don't need how, know how to get there. No. He just ran to you. He ran to me. He wow. came to me. Um, what an incredible moment. It sounds like life completely <laughs> turned around at that point. So we have this huge viewership, and a lot of people are struggling with the orphan spirit. Yes. What is it that you recommend for them in steps to take to break that off of them? First of all, like I said, the 23rd Psalm has always been um, God's home for me. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I go through the valley of the shadow of death right there. I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. Because that valley means, and, and he's with me, that there is things in my life and, and other people's lives that need to be put to death. Hmm. Spirit of abandonment, addiction. But we got these shadows to say, oh, but you can't, you can't do that. You know, another shadow comes along and says, you know, you've been so good at not taking that drink or those drugs or hanging around these people. You know, you've been so good. You can reward yourself. Yeah. So every time the Lord has taken me through the valley of the shadow of death, he has taken something out. And he's always shown me, mm, this has got to be dead. Honey, this has got to die. He throws it away. And now I don't mind going through the valley of the shadow of death because I know that at the end of that, there is a restoration. He's, re he's restoring my soul. He has given me everything that he has provided surely goodness and mercy they all do follow me all the days of my life because i was willing to go through the but valley. were you able to hear that when you're before jesus no. in that truck you were no, not able to hear that I didn't. No. so what is some language that you could share with these people like a friend of mine you know that has been struggling with that that does not know her parents at mm -hmm. all and it's been struggling her since for about 28 years. Mm. What is it that we could say her? She's searching it, she wants it. She doesn't know how to get there. She knows Jesus. But even with Jesus, it's the back and forth thing because there is that shadow you're talking about. Mm. What is it to people like that that we could say, this is what you can do to step into that because it worked for me? Um, I would tell her verbally, Say, I choose you, Lord Jesus. I choose you. Not my feelings of abandonment. Not my feelings of, you know, not, I just, I choose you this day, Lord Jesus. I don't know what it means for you to be my father. Please show me. Oh, when you give him permission, bam, yes. bam. I have a scripture because it talks about adoption in the Bible, you know, over and over and over again for all of us. And I wanted to share that it's out of Romans 8. And the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. God moved you at that time. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Mm -hmm. There it is. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphans. So it's a choice, I assume, in a way to get there. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection. Beloved Father, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being. You are God's beloved child. He always whispers, I love you. Okay, mm. I, I just love you. I am your father. I am your father and, I, and it makes me happy to be your father he finds joy in all that and all of that but in the bible times being adopted was one of the most extreme honors mm. in the world that's um, huge we've kind of you know made it 
We're, we're out of time because I know there's oh, a lot yes, more yes, to yes. it, but really, really quick. Did you ever long to find your real parents? I did. Did you find them? I did. How did that go? My, my youngest daughter um, did the DNA swabby thingy. And uh, my father is an American Alaskan. I met him. That moment of encounter, that very moment of encounter, was that a celebration? No. It was not? No. You knew Jesus at that time? Yes. How did you handle that? Oh, I wanted Jesus, you know, I wanted, I, I wanted so much for God not to give him the spirit of timidity or fear, but of a sound mind because he has Alzheimer's. Did you? Oh, he had Alzheimer's. Yes. Wow, what a show, what a show. But you're free today Thank and you. everything has changed. Jesus loves me. Thank you. Wow, there's so much going on. You know what? And I'm not going to leave you hanging here. All I can tell you right now is Okia is free and so can you. Contact us. Have a great day. Roger Wan grew up being abused by his dad and neglected by his mom daily. I am sure there are many who have experienced the same and may need to overcome the past. You didn't help the kid that got beat up. It just lingered in my mind for, um, for, for a long time. So when God called me to the Tenderloin, I mean, I, I didn't have a plan, no business plan, no programs. and. I just want to tell them about Jesus. I'm sure the sheriff department wanted to make sure that I was okay. safe, not being harassed by others. 